Hey everyone, welcome to Collector Chatter. I'm your host Miguel here, my co-host Charlie. And in today's episode, we're gonna recap the Obi-Wan Kenobi episode four and five. And make sure you smash that like button, comment, and subscribe. Now let's chat Obi-Wan Kenobi. All right, guys, we are going to chat some more Obi-Wan Kenobi recap. Uh, this time we we took a little week off on, on, on recapping the, you know, the shows we were trying to do them every week. But we're going to do four and five in this episode uh, before the season finale, yes. which will be coming up soon. Uh, if you guys are listening to us or watching this, it'll be in the next day or two. So we just kind of wanted to give you a little input uh, just in general. And then like we normally do, we will get into spoilers and everything afterwards. We'll let you guys know ahead of time. Uh, if you haven't watched it yet, definitely check it out. I mean, at this point, you probably should have because we're already almost on the, on the uh, finale at this point. But just my overall kind of uh, outlook on how four and five went. Um, you know, we were talking about in previous ones, if you guys didn't check it out, definitely we spoke about one, two, and three. Uh, one, I thought was amazing. Two was a little slower. Three, I thought was amazing again. Uh, four was another kind of, if I remember, kind of a filler type episode. Um, a lot of good stuff happened, but it wasn't like too crazy, too much action, you know, like what we thought. And then five just kind of like went all crazy. Like it was, we got all the action. We got a lot of crazy stuff. And it, overall, I feel like the pace of this has been done really well because you're getting kind of your ups and downs. Uh, but it does make you like, wait, what's going to happen next? The only overall thing I could say is like, I, I wish it wasn't just six episodes because I feel I like agree. this would be so amazing as like an eight to 10 episode series, because I'm sure there's a lot more they could pack into it. And now but where we are, it's kind of like, we're going to end already in one more episode. And it just makes me think like, I think it's going to do another season or is it just going to be, Nope. Now we're jumping into episode or four movies, you know, like, yeah. I don't know, like what, what we think of that, but my overall aspect of these episodes were definitely great. I think five was great. I think it's hard to say which one was my favorite right now, because I think there's a few that are like kind of for different reasons. Um, but overall, I think the show by far has been amazing. It's probably the best, in my opinion, Star Wars type show since The Mandalorian. A hundred percent agree. Because yeah, with Book of Boba Fett, I just think that kind of fell short. But um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to agree with you for the most part. Like episode four was, I mean, I enjoyed it, but it was definitely more of a slow burn kind of mm -hmm. I do say I go back and forth. Was it a filler episode? I mean, it still, you know, went along with the story, but I know it disappointed a lot of people in the fandom who were like, they felt like they were promised certain things for the show and like they felt like they weren't getting them. And I don't necessarily sit in that ballpark because like I do look at this as like a one big long movie. So I don't want to look at it just episode by episode. Yeah. But like the main concept of the episode was, you know, they were infiltrating the, um, you know inquisitor base um and it had some you know good action in it but all intents and purposes episode five to me is my favorite episode of the series i like had like fanboy tears of joy <laughs> like i absolutely like not that i don't want to really get into episode four but like i feel like episode five is like the the meat here like that which we will be talking about spoilers. There's no way of, you know, not talking about this episode without doing spoilers. But to me, this is as the crown jewel of the best episode of the the series so far with number one of close second. But yeah, this, this episode was, I like, I love this episode. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it definitely, I think the way they pace it out, like I was saying before, like, yep. I totally agree. I don't think necessarily saying the filler thing with episode four. I feel like that's like kind of like a, a go-to thing when people say yep. when it's like a slower episode. Um, but because five like was the way it was, and especially because it came after four, I think it even hyped it up more and like, oh my God, get giddy and stuff when you see like, you know, anything super Star Wars and lightsabers and like you get that like feeling again. Yeah. So it was definitely something cool, but yeah, I mean, that was kind of like our overall uh, take on it, but like, for sure, we're going to get more in depth now. So like, like we said, we're definitely going to, you know, talk about some spoilers and get more into like what was actually happening in the episode, what do we think is going to be happening and like kind of our take uh, overall. 
Um, I know me and you kind of chatted about it. Usually when we watch the episodes, yep. we'll talk right after and see kind of like what we thought about it. Um, I believe you watched it like right away, like bright yeah, early. Yeah, uh, I, I actually <laughs> didn't. Yeah, I actually didn't get to watch episode five until later on Wednesday night um, when I was like, you know what? I had a little bit of time. Let me let me get it out of the way so I don't forget to like, you know, have time to watch it. Um, and I thought it was like right off off the bat, like initially I was like, wow, like that was awesome. Like I loved like a lot of stuff that happened and I liked like that we finally we talked about this last time but we finally got more anakin we got more because what i was saying i was like there's no way to bring him back just to be yeah. in a suit like we both agreed like there was no way and we do get more um and of course they were in flashbacks i still think we're gonna get more of him as anakin in real time at some point i thought we would have now i'm just wondering if they're gonna do it in episode six um but they did it as a flashback which you know we figured would happen um but that scene, I'm sure, like when you were talking about, you loved it. Like, I mean, how they, I, how I, I like, I have watched that scene like over and over. Like, I loved that scene. Uh, I thought it was, as a huge Star Wars fan, Anakin being one of my all time favorite characters, Obi Wan as well. Like, that's where this show like has a special place for me as a Star Wars fan, and especially like I grew. I mean, I was obviously introduced to the original movies first, but mm-hmm. I mean the prequels were like my experience of seeing star Wars in the movies. They were made for, I was also the right age group where like, when I saw them, I loved them. I've never had complaints where I know some like, you know, crotchety old men who saw them were like, you ruined star Wars. Like F you George Lucas. Like I've always loved the prequels. And like, I thought this was just such an amazing flashback of seeing Obi-Wan train Anakin. I also think it ties up some, I don't know if loose ends is the correct term, but like how some people were upset in the episodes before where like Vader, you know, was holding off on like destroying Obi-Wan. I feel like he's coming into play with maybe some of the lessons that Obi-Wan ha- was teaching him back yeah. during this flashback. Um, I love how they kind of, mimic some choreography from revenge of the sith of them fighting i thought you know they i feel like they'd use some de-aging technology but not to the point where they have on like some of the star wars movies but i thought hayden looked great i know he didn't look as young as he did does in the i was movie. hearing they didn't use it though and i think that's why i feel like they had to use a little of it like i've watched like ev like one thing that I'm a little confused by the show actually is I think it should have had a bigger budget like this. It yeah. should have been like the cream of the crop for Lucasfilm. Like don't hundred percent know why maybe they're still like, you're only allowed a certain amount for a Disney plus show versus a theatrical, which is probably has the case. To be. that has to um, be, yeah. where like the Luke Skywalker stuff is different. I think they gave them all the money in the world for that because it's Luke Skywalker and they were legitimately making a, a person out of a computer where this actually is hating Christensen where it's not Mark Hamill. Um, yeah, I've read both, but I think they use some de-aging technology because like is, I think both Ewan and Hayden look great right now in real life, but like, yeah, you like had the found it easier. Youth, you sure. could tell he's had a more like he's continuously came out of star Wars being like an amazing top actor where you know, Hayden has been typecast and, you know, kind of stepped away from acting. So yeah, I, was gonna say, I don't think he you? looks as good <laughs> in like real life as Ewan does. I think they did yeah. some de-aging, just not to the point, but I, it didn't bother me. It doesn't take me out of it. Like I was basically, like I said, like I was like crying nerd tears of joy. Like I thought it was amazing. And yeah, like I said, I've watched that over and over, even YouTube clips where they've cut the scenes together. It, that is exactly yeah. what I wanted. And I do agree with you. I think we're going to see more Hayden. A prediction I'll make is I do think that they're going to obviously going to have a major battle in the finale. That battle we saw was not like the rematch of the century that they said we were going to get. I feel like Obi-Wan is going to take a part of his mask off with the lightsaber of some sort. And you will see like part of Hayden's face fighting. Yeah. Which that would be pretty, pretty awesome. I think it'll definitely Which will be a lend moment. amazing to a Funko Pop. Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. The scene was awesome. I thought 
it was cool to see that and it obviously tied into the story of like him training him and like his him getting more into the mind of like what you know what how he became vader and like him holding back and all that stuff but then he probably starts to see like where things were unraveling early on because that obviously that battle takes on pretty early on because that's obviously um, yeah it's from like attack they said it would tear and everything so yep. you know that, that yeah that's that version of of anakin um so you but you can see like where he's like realizing where a lot of this stuff started to stem and started to come whatever um uh, before eventually what we know of him turning into vader and stuff um but i i it's funny that you said this because i haven't thought about it but now it kind of makes sense uh the whole budget thing so like one of the so like we have a ton of stuff that we love but i kind of actually want to start off with stuff that i was kind of like yeah go for a it. little like kind of like bother me or i thought were not like my favorite things and then kind of see what you thought so one thing has to kind of do with the budget and I thought it was interesting because I feel like there's a few like scenes or things that happen that you kind of can tell were done with constraints and being Star Wars and Disney Plus, like you would think they would be bigger, but maybe like you said, Disney Plus has a certain budget, which usually shows, I feel like that's kind of what happens. Yep. Like shows will kind of have a very limited budget versus a blockbuster movie where they let them do whatever they want and one of the things specifically is in the scene where uh vader and, and the troopers and all them are coming to get obi-wan and they're in that little um that like shelter type thing or whatever yep. i just thought that that scene and that little battle or somewhat mini battle was super weak because not because of how they're fighting or whatever it was but it just felt like to me, it felt like it was 300 when they funneled everyone into the tiniest little thing because that was the way that they would fight back. But I don't think that's what yep. Obi-Wan and them were doing because they didn't know they were coming after them there. They just happened to be in there. But maybe it was just because they didn't have too much room to film. But that scene to me just choreographed wise was just a little like weak where I'm like, I I was expecting a grander scheme or even if they because they're using um the stage green screens, right? They use like that thing, right? Yeah, which but they have ways, I'm sure, of making a, a something look bigger, no, like make it yeah, I agree, but you're not wrong with that. Like the stagecraft technology, which I think is amazing, yeah. doesn't seem to be working for like I love this show, but if I will nitpick, yeah, like that's what we're here to do. It doesn't work as well for me as it does in The Mandalorian, and I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if it's the is it color the world palette. Or the co- yeah, yeah like the colors. We're kind of they've decided to keep this story kind of constrained a lot to just like, and we're not even on Tatooine, which is ironic. It's just like all dirt and sand. Like yeah. I didn't in the second episode where they went to like that underground world, like city environment, yeah. like that looked great. Um, they are kind of showing that the scale isn't as big when there's not a lot going around by using the stagecraft. Yeah. And it, and it makes it kind of, it, it, to me, it's like a lot of scenes are very, they're in like rooms and very small and not as grand and like worlds. Like we would think that that's also, the only thing yep. that like, I kind of was like, yeah, like it was great. And dude, seeing them lined up and like seeing them like getting ready to get in there. But like, that's the thing that kind of bothered me. I was like, but like, would they like, I just felt like it'd be more grand, I guess you could no, say, like I, if that's what they're coming after, you know? Yeah, I, I don't disagree with you. I think another part of issue with the show maybe is like Deborah Chow, who was like a stud. She directed some amazing Mandalorian episodes. Like she's directing every episode of this show, yeah. which has its pluses and minuses. You have like a singular vision, like you would a movie. Mm-hmm. But I think it's showing that like, probably had a little more help with from John Favreau than people thought like um I think this show if my one crit- big criticism is I don't understand why they didn't give this to Dave Filoni and John Favreau to do yeah I was just gonna say like you can see that they don't ha- like yes they have their hands in it but you can tell they don't have as much of a grasp 100%. Of it as it's think. not their show yeah um it's just weird because this has been in the works for so long. Like if we were to get a season two of Obi-Wan, Dave Filoni 100% is going to have say in it. 
where here i think they kind of like you're like okay that's okay that's good that's good like you can do that and like they yeah. moved on where he is legitimately making mandalorian with john favreau where here they you know did what they have to do by you know working for lucasfilm because dave filoni's actually been promoting I mean, he's in charge of all creative now so anything that gets anything that's being made will now be funneled through him one way or another yeah um but yeah i, I think we're missing that and it's kind of like why the heck didn't you give this to dave filoni in my yeah. opinion it's especially like oh it's a big not only that character. i mean he is he made clone wars with george lucas which heavily you know that's a show about anakin and obi-wan so he mm -hmm. knows those characters, in my opinion, better. The only person who knows them better is George Lucas. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I can go all, talk about this all day. It's just the show would have, been, as much as I am loving the show, I think it would have been that much better if Dave Filoni was in charge of it. Yeah. And, and, and like, also, you guys listening, like, I love the show. And then, like, yeah. we're, we're obviously here to nitpick little things and just kind of put our inputs. And like I said, there's going to, there's plenty of positives. I just kind of want to, like, especially you being a huge Star Wars head in general and me just kind of being more of a casual fan i just kind of wanted to give my input of things to see kind of like what you felt about it um but my next biggest thing and this is probably like the biggest thing that i have kind of like a thing about is the whole reva thing not necessarily just her in general but like how her story how it kind of went and what happens and whatever um i just have like I don't know, like the whole thing. So obviously we're, we're telling you everything and all the spoilers and everything, but we see Reva, we find out, you know, she's like uh, an inquisitor with all these people and she is very, you know, strong minded. And you could tell like, she's trying to prove something and she's, you know, trying to be the Vader's right hand man and all that kind of stuff. And then we seen where she like, quote unquote, killed the grand inquisitor, which obviously surprise, surprise, he wasn't dead, which we, pretty much yeah. knew because of obvious reasons with canon that that wasn't going to happen but that happens and then we talked about this but then like basically what ends up happening is she was a young like you said you knew that yeah. and we kind of pointed that out and that i like that line like that storyline i thought was pretty cool it's like wow that's awesome so now it turned into like a revenge thing and come to find out that this whole time she was basically just trying to plan on getting a way to kill vader basically like over this whole period of you know 20 years technically is what it was um but then come to find out that he knew she was like that as well so the fact that both of those things happened didn't really like surprise me i'm like oh okay so it was like kind of a shock it was cool but what i didn't like is that the time jump. So it's about 20, like it's, it's 20 years, right? Is from when she was little and now that happened around there. Yeah. Say, right. I just think it's doesn't make sense that for that long, she would hold off if she knew this was her mission or whatever. And then at the same time that for that long, he knew she was, and he never tried to kill her off or they never had anything until. Yeah. Now. I mean, that's what I thought was kind of weird, like story wise. And I just felt like it just didn't, it made it it kind of just like i felt like it happened because it was episode five and we only have one more episode left i i completely agree um reva i, I i've had a roller coaster i feel like of <laughs> how i like her i i do like even though we called the twist like i liked that twist of her being a youngling and but she's been written like the writing on the show a little bit is a little weak at times and she's yeah. had the like she has just skated like her way through the story it's i don't like to say this because it's a huge you know riff in the fandom right now that like this is a reva show not an obi-wan show i disagree with that like i think she's just she is part of the ensemble cast and is important but i feel like we're getting just as much meat as obi-wan we're just some people don't feel that way because reva is a new character but yeah like i loved when vader was like you i knew you were a youngling but you're right like if he knew like that was just a, a line they wrote to like make a convenience for the story because if he did knew he would have killed her yes exactly <laughs> and like they vader who is one of my all-time movie characters out of anything there's a lot of times where i, I don't want to say they've made him weak in this show but like it's been convenience for story mm -hmm. like and now you kind of find out 
and like at that one point like we needed Riva to survive this story but like he wouldn't have when he when she lost like let the ship go in yeah. episode four which that's essentially how episode i know we we're really talking about episode five but like obi-wan tala and leia they all um escape from the inquisitor base and vader comes and he's like he basically wants to kill Riva, but then she's like, Oh, you know, I, I put a tracker on them. And then all of a sudden she's like, Oh, you know, you are, you know, better than I thought. Like, I don't know the yeah, line yeah. he uses, but like, once again, it's just like all been convenient for the story writing for Riva just to skate her way through the story. Um, but I allow to myself to overlook that because I just thought it was badass when Vader said that. And I loved when he fought her. I thought that was, I mean, yeah, that the, was fight, the fight was awesome. Yeah, the fight that fight was awesome, and I thought like that, that was peak Vader interaction was great. I just, I just like, yeah, when it no. happened and stuff is what kind of got me. And then I guess like the way it got to that point, because even the fact of him deeming her the Grand Inquisitor, if he knew who she was, to then like right afterwards they have this confrontation that exactly. was just a little off yeah, for me. Yeah, so it's kind of yeah. like they didn't need to do that, like. Because it didn't surprise us as fans to be like, oh, she's actually going to be the great. No, we knew that she wasn't going to be. Yeah. So it kind of was just like a cheesy moment that they threw in there, I guess. It just didn't really fit in. But to kind of just go back to something you said about this is a Reba show or whatever, like, I don't agree with that. I don't think it was. But I can see where I can see people make an argument that it's not as much of a Kenobi show as we probably thought it would have been. And the only reason why I say that is because there are a lot of moving parts. Like we have the Vader side of stuff, which obviously we know he's tied to Kenobi, but we have that side. We had the Reva line. We have a young um, Leia. Oh, Leia. Oh my God. It's a She's blank. way we have a young too Leia. involved in this show than for my take, for my life. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. There's a yep. lot of those little things where I guess naming it Obi-Wan Kenobi is what kind of has me surprised after five episodes that this is what the Kenobi episode, that makes sense. No, so it like, does. I don't think he's not involved in it. Obviously, I think he, his storyline is great. I think like we're seeing, like, like you said, he was battered. He's like, he's gone through all these things. I like that version of him. And I see him now getting more into like that like at first we got him in a protective mode of like with, with leia and now we see him like where he's going to be more combative combative i'm sure with vader now knowing what's happening but so much has focused a lot on a lot of these other things that if you think about it and i can only compare it to this and i know it's very different but like let's say we compare it to mandalorian right it's called mandalorian it pretty much stems around Mandalorian. You got other characters. You do got Grogu, but he's attached to Mandalorian. So there's a lot that happens, but it is genuinely a Mandalorian show. Yep. Like, what would you, how could you argue? Because I'm sure you can, that this is actually a Kenobi show and none of that other stuff really is affecting it as much as I think it is. Yeah. So like, I look at it as, you know, they needed to add these other characters to make it a story. Um, Some, to make it course. compelling um, because as, as a Star Wars fan, you know, obviously there's tons of, you know, books that have been made in the past, but for movie purposes only. And if you're not like a hardcore Star Wars sweaty like myself, you know that like if you've watched Revenge of the Sith and then you watch A New Hope, Obi-Wan is legitimately just supposedly been on Tatooine the entire time becoming, you know, his old Ben self watching Luke and nothing happens. Yeah. I think they've done a pretty good job making a creative, you know, compelling story where it just, this is how you make, you tell a story. Unfortunately, I get what like you're saying and other people are saying, but like it couldn't have just been Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Um, the problem is I think they've elevated Reva a little too much, um, yeah. which is why why not to repeat myself, why people are thinking that. And I have not read leaks for the show because I didn't want to be spoiled. The only leak that I had seen which I had talked about in the very beginning, I knew Leia was going to be in the show, so I wasn't as surprised. But I didn't think she was going to be, like, in every episode is straight up, like, a main character. And I also think that's taken away a little bit as well. Like, I kind of wish we went on that mission. She was stolen. Obi-Wan helped get her and returned her safely. Like, one yeah. thing that I thought was a little cheesy, if I had a nitpick in the last episode, like, 
they've totally like and i get like you know I, i'm all about strong female characters but it's like leia is now this like amazing engineer who <laughs> is fixing you know the door to open in this base for them to escape like they're giving these like random like that just didn't need to happen but it's awesome because it was it's leia's doing it but they're just giving they could have just given more meat to obi-wan and one thing that i think would have made people really feel more like this is an obi-wan show is how i was just fanboying over like the flashbacks and one thing i loved is how that was like interlaced throughout the entire episode it wasn't just yeah, like yeah. flashback. they should have been doing that the entire show yeah in my opinion there should have been flashbacks present day flashbacks present day that would have i don't think you'd have anyone complaining about this show like it's super weird like people the star wars fans are either complete a-holes or like they absolutely like love it this mm -hmm. show is really, it's really is divided. Very divided, yeah. People think it's amazing or they hate it. I don't see much to hate. Like, I get why people hate The Last Jedi. Like, to me, this is just a fun story. And episode five, I just kind of, if that happened as episode four, I also think we'd have a lot of people feeling differently. Mm -hmm. Sorry, not to like. No, I no, no. I, kind I, of I, I love hearing you. Yeah, no, I love hearing your take because obviously you know a little bit more of the ins and outs and like the the more deeper stuff and different storylines different things that happen so i just kind of wanted to see like your because like i said i'm watching this with you know basic knowledge of star wars watching the main movies and like little things here and there um and just kind of seeing it as a casual on that end i just like that's why like i see these things yep. right away and obviously both of us being big film you know, people in general and knowing a lot of, of on that end of things, we obviously tend to pick little things that maybe, you know, a perfect movie or show had that this doesn't have. And, you know, that's just kind of our minds. But um, I just think it was like interesting that like there are a lot of these main side characters and it's yes. not just side characters like the the i forgot her name tara or tara the girl yeah tala I think yeah, tala really yeah i thought she was a perfect side character she had a, a big enough role it wasn't too aggressive obviously she ends up sacrificing herself we get that sacrificing moment which is a big which thing and like which was amazing and that was it and that's her she's done her her character is over that doesn't take away from him and, and anything so like I think maybe it is the Reva one. Maybe the Reva one's just too strong and maybe the Leia is too strong for me to now be like, well, there's a lot going on along with just the fact that now we have to, you know, you know, with Obi-Wan or something like that, yeah. I guess you could say. But I agree. They have to obviously add people in. Um, but I do like a lot of the smaller side characters. I think they've done them well. And even um, like uh, Ice Cube's son, yeah. uh, like his character is great. And he's like a nice little side uh, character and stuff so like they've had some really good ones and then i feel like there's some that are like and i think the reva one is an interesting one because that's just one that like i i don't hate her and i understood the character I, in the beginning you hated her in the sense of like wow this let's go yep. bitch like you know she's like whatever but you got it but i think um how they went with her i think could have been different and the whole young thing like that was great i just think they just they like took a really big turn to get to that where they yep. could have maybe made it more of a direct thing. And she wouldn't have felt like she was taking up as much as she was. Also, she like, just can't die. Like, <laughs> and then I was going to say, I thought she was going to die and I was killed, but she's not dead. So then I'm like, no. so like now I'm like, why well, they should have just, if anything, they should have killed her. Like that's just, yeah. maybe that would end that. I agree. Cause I think the finale is gonna be satisfying to me i think it's gonna be badass but i think it's gonna divide the fandom because i think she's gonna do something very very important that i think she's ultimately gonna save luke skywalker well you said she was gonna turn good at some point anyways you said at that this, from before yes. before knowing that she was gonna turn on vader exactly which i because we didn't really which, you know. i feel like at this point she's good she finds that trend, you know, she finds a communicator, which, of course, Kamal's character just happened to drop, which that drove me crazy. Like, that's another lazy writing, in my opinion, where it's like, OK, Obi-Wan gave him stuff that was important. He just, you know, stumbly runs to this the shuttle and he drops the most important thing with a message that no one should see besides Obi-Wan because no one knows his kids exist. Yeah. Anakin's kids. So that's like another thing that they're kind of rewriting canon, which doesn't 
bother me to enhance it but i do going off of that she obviously the episode ends which i know we're jumping back and forth but i like doing that because we're just talking yeah, about no, of we like. course. <laughs> she's sees the message that we get from bail organa um about you know protecting the anakin's kids luke mm-hmm. and on tatooine that's clearly where she's going yeah and i i I think this is going to drive people crazy, especially Reva haters, because I think she's going to save the day at the end of the day, not Obi-Wan Kenobi. Because I think Obi-Wan is going to be. Yeah, I, I don't think that would be. They shouldn't do that, but I could see like that being well, a piece. I put it this of... way. It's like we only have so much time left in the series. We're probably yeah, going to get an hour episode. long episode. I'm hoping it's one of the longer ones. And mm-hmm. at one point there was a rumor I read online. It's going to be 90 minutes, but they're putting this in the theaters and some people are saying there's like a 30 minute Q and a attached to it. So that's where the 90 uh, minutes comes from. So I'm, I'm going with, we're probably getting an hour and I've seen concept art, um, which they showed at star Wars celebration. And it looks like Obi-Wan is fighting Vader on Mustafar, which is, you know, the lava planet from mm-hmm. revenge of the Sith, which leads me to believe he's going now to find Vader. Riva is going to Tatooine. Obi-Wan's entire existence at the OG trilogy was watching over Luke. And we're going to now say Reeve is the one who saves the day. That's where I think this is going. Yeah, that's going to be weird. And that is going to either people are going to be like, whatever, or people are going to be like, oh, no, this is going to be like Last Jedi Luke Skywalker type hate. Yeah, I just think I honestly just think overall the the Reva character just was not consistently written right. Like having the character I think was fine. And I think pieces of it were great. And like, you know, like the youngling part, like all that is great. Even her wanting to eventually kill Vader, like that, all that part was fine. I just think certain things just were weird. Cause even like not to keep going on Reva, but like yeah. another thing on like the fact is that if she was all along this good person and was just trying to get revenge or whatever and kill Vader, why was she almost gonna kill Leia? Yeah, I agree. It's like that. Frankly, she, got she to should the have point, had her, and she has killed people. Actually, she's killed other people too, like along the way. So, like, is she really not good? And it's just she only I think wants she's to go like the an Vader, an, you know? The best way of explaining is like she's like an anti-hero type character, like a you know a Punisher slash you know Deadpool. Like she has no yeah. problem killing, but they are good guys at the end of the day. Like. Yeah, I do think she her one sole mission was nothing was going to stop. She didn't care. She thought she was done dirty. Quite frankly, she should have just had her own show. You could have had her story arc as her own show and never involved Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, they just exactly. thought it was like, you know, it's a great way to, you know, make a current type of show that we're getting in our today's, you know, climate. And she checks off like I'm 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 just being honest here, like checks off a lot of boxes. Uh-huh. Um and I just wish she had her own show because like ultimately like I said, I think she, Moses Ingram, like she's doing a really good job, the actress. Yeah, yeah. That um, no the acting of her has been great. Um like I loved her in the Queen's Gambit. When she was cast in the show, I was actually pretty excited. Um, because it's funny, she posts on her Instagram her doing like lightsaber training, and she got in trouble by Disney and Lucasfilm. Like, you need to pull that shit down right now. Oh, uh, like was talking about this in like uh interviews now on like the late night shows. Um, but she could have had her own show. Um, I'm like thinking about this right now. Like, you just replace her motivation of why you want to like they disguise her wanting to find Obi-Wan just to get to Vader. You could have done that another way. It could have just been her infiltrating the Inquisitors because quite yeah. frankly, the Inquisitors are wasted in this show. Yeah. They're flat out they're wasted. super weak. They seem very weak. In, in the entire... cart, in like the animated show, like they're badass. Like the Grand Inquisitor was wasted in this show. He was like a bait and switch, obviously. Like it was kind of just like, okay, you know, as Star Wars fans know him. And like, obviously the main Inquisitor was Reva like yeah. it just yeah thinking about yeah. it loud, and then you like, see him come back and like that was like a little surprise and like oh that's cool but like i don't know but then like it, some stuff that i love because obviously we're not just talking about negative yeah. stuff obviously there's a ton of stuff that we like i loved the hardcore vader in this in this episode where you see him oh, that yeah. fight scene with riva i thought one of the best scenes Although I hated the 
up until how they got into this little thing. And I didn't like that little fight of them going in and shooting and whatever, but him stopping their oh, yeah, ships from going away yes. was sick. It was amazing. And like, just, you just see his power. And like, every time he was just moving with his hand, like when he was fighting Reba and just, just straight force, like he wasn't, he didn't even have to hit her. Like he was just, dude, it was amazing. He never her. used his own lightsaber. No, he never did. I was here about that too. Like he ended up using hers and snapped it into two and made it yeah. two. But like, that was amazing. And like, I still just continue to get that scene of like, it's a flying out. And he just grabs it out of there basically and stops him and brings him down. And obviously they tricked with another little thing and flew away. But like, Which, like what? that's where I was kind of like, well, couldn't you stop that one? No, but whatever. But like that actual scene, like seeing that power, I was like, yeah, that's pretty badass. Like, they need more of this yeah like, 100% later. and i'm sure we'll get more of that and going into this last episode probably but um i know you hinted towards it but obviously this episode ended with a big cliffhanger and everything and with luke now so we talked about like how he should be eventually in this at some point besides that one little scene that we've seen of him which was also in the trailers um but now i'm assuming we'll get something out of it maybe it won't be super major but it's tied to something that's going to happen and i don't want it to be that reva's going over there and then like whatever but i'm sure she's going to be involved with it somehow but it's just going to be interesting what they do like with that especially I mean, if you said if you've seen shots or pictures that which doesn't mean they're on they're like that battle over there concept art changes all the time but i yeah, just been like course. heavily like you know nerding out about this and thinking like I actually would have thought we would have had more Luke in this show. So I think he's going to be heavily like, I think we're done with Leia and like this episode is all about Luke. And I'm just really trying to think how they wrap this all up because no one Vader doesn't know about Luke. The inquisitor shouldn't know that he's hanging out there. I'm going to guess like Riva's ultimately going to kill everyone who's trying to hunt her down there. And ultimately she dies. And that's how they, you know, wrap it up with a nice bow that like no one still knows. I just don't. Yeah, because I, I was gonna say it has to get to that point. That's also why we have to lose Leia because if they're yeah. gonna get Luke involved, Leia can't basically be Quite there. Frankly, so, like, I feel like they need to like mind wipe Leia because she knows way too much at this point. But well, I'm that's sure what I'm saying. Yeah, the Leia we think <laughs> we know it doesn't know as much as this Leia does essentially. But like, yeah, um, like I like. I like the actress. I love that little girl. I think she's, she's, she's adorable. cute. She's awesome. Yeah. And like, I like the character that they're doing with her, but I agree that they just kind of had her hang around too much and do a little too much. Like I get it. Like you said, they're probably just trying to empower her and like, you know, yep. to become the Leia that we know, but I agree, like maybe a little too much, but yeah, it's good. It's going to be interesting to see like what they do with luke or how they're going to use him and we've only seen him in like quick shots you know this actor and see how he does as a child um but ultimately do i don't know if you know this and reading or whatever but like is this supposed to or do you think this is going to end very like like I, is there a gap between this I, and the movie like what do you think that that well, timeline I think there has to be still a gap. I mean, there, has, there is a gap because of age. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say because of age. I haven't but read because like, I don't want to know. Um, but as in anything in Hollywood, this was supposed to be a limited series. I know we talked about this in the last episode. Yeah. There's rumors that there's going to be a second season because of how popular it's been and how great it's done. Um, so, and I know there, who knows these rumors are true, that they may have changed the ending. Um which I feel like if they change the ending, that means Riva's living because they don't care about the, you know, it's terrible. All the hate she's gone in, but they're going to keep what they're supporting her. Like they they're molding her. I feel like to be like, even if she does die in the show, maybe she still gets a spinoff. It could just be, a, you know, she's gonna be like an Andor. Yeah. I feel like, yeah. Like, like they want her to like be that. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, oh, I, I don't know how this will end. And it's really bothering me, but we're almost going to be there to know. And I, I can't yeah. see it. I think it's going to be an epic finale. I just don't. And I'm not going to be one of those whining fans who's probably going to be upset because I do know Reva, Reva has to be, have a play a big part in Luke being saved. It's not a coincidence that they, sh the, the final shot of that was 
her finding out where he is and then they showed yeah. him laying and in bed. She's the like, one knowing, yeah. Yeah. So and maybe Obi-Wan ultimately fights Vader and then goes back to Tatooine and is like they team up. Um because I don't envision her like now being quote unquote bad anymore. Well, because like, what do you think her purpose is now where she stands and knowing that information? Like, why is she going there? And well, what maybe she she's going do? there because she's like, oh, maybe I can get Vader this way. Like, by luring, even though Vader another... doesn't know he has these kids, he doesn't know they were ever born, but it's. But like, do you think? Again, this is kind of like a, a little flaw in her little story, but like she tried to use Leia, loses her, and now she's gonna try to use Luke and not f- care about Leia again. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, no, knowing that she's still out there. Yeah, it's weird. Well, it's but now she doesn't want like her whole motivation as us as the viewers, like she was trying to get to Leia because she knows she was important to Obi Wan. She doesn't need Obi Wan anymore because, and even though she never really wanted Obi Wan, like we realized that was just like. The whole twist was she wanted Vader the whole time and knew that was the only way to get to Vader. Yeah. So but she, she also still... she also used that in a way to get well, some thought she was getting Vader's trust and yes, getting like exactly that she was also doing that. Yeah. I don't know what they're really gonna do, actually. I, I don't know. Which is exciting, but uh yeah. I do yeah. I, I feel like Obi-Wan needs to save the day though. I, I mean, he really has to that. do it's something to make show. it. Yeah, it has to be a big and because we obviously know he's not going to like kill Vader. He's not going to do like there's nothing major like that happening because we know what's yeah. going to happen essentially. So like, but it has to be something big enough that. And Luke doesn't like use a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? No, who Obi-Wan Kenobi is like he knows like in the originals like oh there's that crazy old ben guy but like that's also makes me feel like how much of an interaction is he really gonna have i was gonna say because he doesn't really know him like that right yeah so like even then yeah so which now they've done a good job of flushing out of like leia did know a little bit about obi-wan kenobi with like knowing you know even though the line is a little contradicting but they've done a good job of why she wanted obi-wan kenobi in the originals and they're even you know as much as people don't like the sequels like they're now kind of given a meaning of like why she named her son ben because she did have a close relationship with ben kenobi like yeah. it's uh i don't know ultimately i really do like this show yeah no i would say the same thing i don't i don't think the little things here and there like maybe not like the show um I think it's also because we're we, we judge this with like such a high like yeah. you know critique because it is Star Wars it is under the Disney brand it is like we know how big they can get and I think that expectation is what makes us like see little flaws and kind of be like oh well, this is you know a little whatever and like is it the greatest show of all time no and I'm sure you wouldn't say that either but it's no. amazing as if you're a Star Wars fan it's definitely a great entertaining show. Um, and I think, yeah, this episode will probably make tie it into like where overall, when you look back at it and you're like, oh, and you talk about how was Obi-Wan as a show, you would be like, it was a great show. And yep. I think like that's how it'll end um, where I feel like we can only really compare it to like the other major ones. And obviously Mandalorian is one of those ones where it's like, that was amazing. Second season came out, you're like, that was amazing. And then Book of Boba Fett came out and like, it never caught on. So we were able to kind of like overall give it a like, it was good. It was cool, but it wasn't like whatever. I feel like this has had enough moments to keep it in the, that was a great show. I agree. Like, category. And one of the issues though, with why I think Mandalorian is so great is you had no expectations because he's a completely new character. Boba yeah. Fett, for example, you're dealing with a beloved character. Yeah. I like the story arc that they did with Boba, but it wasn't what people expected. Yeah. Um, they humanized him, which like I'm all about gr- character growth, but that's why it wasn't as, you know, well received. And now Obi-Wan and Anakin are two of the most beloved characters of the entire franchise as well. So it's like people yeah. have these pre like, you know, what they think the story was going to be. And it's <laughs> a little different than that. It's not a bad yeah, thing. Exactly. Where Mandalorian was just like, this is just an awesome new show. Yeah. And with both of it too, it was like it was in a time where it was. So that's later on yeah not explored in his life so like you you like 
at the end of the day, you should expect that it could be completely different because it's not the movie version. Like that's not. Yeah. Whereas Obi Wan Kenobi is filling a gap yes. where we know where he was and we know where he gets to. So you can kind of be critical a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know where it's going to go. As exactly. long as they don't completely do something wild, they're like, well, like, you know, that doesn't make sense because he's not going to do it. That would be the only way that you could like really criticize this type of show. But yeah, obviously people are going to do it no matter what. And there's always going to be nitpicking things. But I do think overall, it's funny you said in the beginning, I never really thought about it, is that I think budget is probably one of the biggest things that kind of like, makes it like not in the amazing category because of a couple little things that yeah they and weirdly enough for all on. you know like this could have the same budget as mandalorian but yeah. you mcgregor's making a lot more money than pay, like pedro pascal like it's yeah. one budget and you have to you know find it's out all going to him <laughs> yeah that i mean let's be real like that's definitely something that i know is probably happening it's just yeah like not that pedro isn't like he's become a name but like no one was like i need to watch the mandalorian because pedro pascal's in it quite frankly no of course we've talked I mean, about you didn't even see past. him as pedro for a very yeah, long time which that's drama for that show and... because he's pissed off that he's in the exactly, most popular exactly. show in the world um, exactly and and which face. makes sense but it is a different thing because like you said it was a brand new character like you and already existed so like you're just it's like a sequel essentially yeah so like you already have everyone that has that love for him as a character so like yeah his status is gonna definitely be bigger than a pedro's status even though he's an, a well-known actor as the mandalorian he was i'm sure in the season two he made a bank i'm yeah. sure like that's where he got his money yes but like right away yeah nah. and even too like i i truly believe when i see ewan and like hayden talk about this show I know they love playing these characters. It's not just a job. Like I actually, it saddens me, but like, it's a job for Pedro. I feel like he's acting whenever he's like doing press. Like you forget, like, yeah, you know, there's a reason people are actors professionally because they're good at their craft mm -hmm. where he's, I'm sure it's cool that he's in star Wars, but at the end of the day, it's a job where for you and Hayden, it's not, which I think shows, but that doesn't mean they don't want to get paid. Like yeah. <laughs> Hayden hasn't Hayden's basically been retired from acting. Um, I'm sure they paid him a lot of money to come back to the show, even yeah. though he wanted to come and he probably yeah. never thought so, this would happen. So like you said, I could be tying up yeah. all the money right there. Just two guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's a, that's a pretty big deal. When you think about it like that, we haven't really, really broke it down like that, but that, that's no. so true. Um, but yeah, that, that's going to be our, our recap. I mean, I, I thought, overall great let us know what you guys think if you guys have been watching uh definitely comment in the you know in the video down below your thoughts of the show in general where do you think it's going to be going um we have one episode left so it's going to be exciting to see you know how this ends um we'll follow up again in our next week's episode you know kind of just giving you our our take and how it ended and you know, I'm sure that's going to be a jam-packed one yeah. as well because we'll have a lot to say regardless, I'm sure, on a positive level or hopefully not so much on a <laughs> negative level. We don't like where it goes, but um, definitely interested. I, like you said, I haven't really been trying to look into anything I don't want. I want to watch it like not knowing anything at all. And every episode so far I've been so like not knowing anything. So I like that because the surprise and everything is, is a lot better. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. Is there anything else that you want to... No, just everyone, you know, let us know in the comments, like how you're feeling about the show, what you like, what you don't like, and let us know, please. If you do know how the show ends, don't spoil in the comments for me or Migs or for yeah. anyone, but feel free to give your like thoughts of where you think the show is going to be going. Um, Cause I know I'm like super, super excited to see how this ends. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it. So until next week, we'll be back again with another uh, great episode for you guys that uh, we're very excited uh, to see the end of Obi-Wan. Um, and until next time, guys. All right. Bye, everyone. And may the force be with you.